Whitney Foster has been beating the odds throughout her 17 years, mostly by just being here. When my wife was pregnant with her, they said she wouldn't even live. So like, you start thinking about now what she's doing. They said she wouldn't live? Yeah. Like, they said that her organs probably wouldn't develop properly, and she, if she did, if she did make it through delivery, she'd probably be a vegetable. She probably wouldn't. That was the term that he used. So. What she is is a vibrant, confident girl, but that hasn't always been the case. Whitney was born with arthrogryposis. One in three thousand babies are diagnosed with the congenital disorder. Muscles and tendons don't develop normally. She has very limited use of her hands and fingers and cannot straighten her arms. I've had a really hard time with a lot of things. Um, usually, disability comes first. That's what everybody sees with me. Yeah, high school was tough for her. It's hard to put yourself out there when you have a disability like that. Um, people judge you for which, what they see and not you know, what you could possibly be able to do. Because when you get right and you got to throw left, that's where we get into trouble. You need to be able to be closer to in front of the corner. Whitney signed up for the bowling team as a freshman at Manual, but didn't show up. She got the courage to come out as a sophomore thanks to the prodding of Coach Bob Hillerick, who got a lot more than he expected. And I still had it in my head, this preconceived notion of you either bowl like a conventional bowler, or you, if you, in her situation, you use the ramp. She, she gets the ball off the rack herself, she throws the ball one time, and it, it, just, it just changed everything that I thought I knew and thought I was going to do with coaching her. It, it, was, it, was, it was really, I enjoyed it because it made me just see things differently. She's made others see things differently as well. Scores that started in the 60s or 70s improved to a 145 average as a senior. Fifth on the team, 15th in the region. That included an emotional high game of 203. As the game went on, you could feel the buzz over what she was doing. And when she walked off, she was in tears. Our girls were in tears. Some of the male girls were in tears. All the parents were just, it was, it was, a, it was kind of an electric moment of, as a coach, you get to stand there and go, yeah, it's pretty neat to be part of this. Most importantly, the girl who had endured countless taunts and stares and downright cruelty had a place to fit in. What has that meant to you, to have someone like that and, and to have the team you have here to, to be a part of? Um, there's, there's no words for it, really. Um, I just, I'm really thankful that I got a chance to meet Bob and some of the girls on the team. And I'm really lucky that they're as accepting as they are. I'm glad they don't look at me as, oh, she's a girl with a disability, she can't do anything. I'm really part of the team now. They don't even look at my disability. And that makes me feel really awesome. It has helped Whitney blossom in the last couple of years, joining clubs at school, even starting her own disability awareness club. I don't treat her any different than I treat my other two daughters, and I just think uh, uh, anything she wants to do, she, I know she could do it. You just have to become comfortable with yourself. And once you like accept that you're not going to be perfect and you're not always going to get what you want, it makes things a lot easier. And once you accept yourself, people, like other people, will start accepting you too.